Hello, welcome to You Don't Know Jack the Ride. How many people will be playing? You're alone, by yourself. That's great. Thank you. Is this the first time? Great to have you back. I was afraid we scared you off last time. You should be typing in your name. How gracious of you. Thanks. If you feel like buzzing, use the letter B. Well, that's all I have to say. Hope to see you at the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by Ball D's Hair Restoration. A whole head of hair in about an hour. And now, here's your host, Guy Towers! All right, welcome to the game. Ooh, God, you really do need to think about an Ava Gabor wig, my friend. <laughs> Ready to play? Because, uh, here we go. Tickle your buzzer and let's see. The category is special today, wild hair. Hey, uh, take a look at this excerpt from a restaurant review. The salad was disgusting. The lettuce was limp and I found about a hundred hairs in it. Assuming he sheds the average amount, how long would the chef have needed to prepare this dish? A day, a week, a month, or a year? It's yours if you want it. On average, people shed 100 to 150 hairs per day. Holy sh**. You know, this is exactly why I think everyone in society should wear a hairnet and uh, tissue boxes on their feet, like I do. How much will this one be worth? Hit that buzzer. Ooh, stanky. No, oh, well, here's the category. I'm too sexy for your hairy butt. Look out, here it comes. Suppose this season's hottest fashion show featured hair shirts. What would you see on the runway? Kate Moss doing penance for her sins, Cindy Crawford shearing a sheep, Elizabeth Hurley shooting photographer. Go for it! <laughs> and uh, this is what we are looking for. Hair shirts are garments that religious hermits wore to make themselves extremely uncomfortable. But let me tell you, that's nothing compared to some platform heels and a push-up bra, because I... I mean, that's what I hear from the ladies that told me that. Oh. Hit your buzzer and snag the This one's called... Ripping off Rachel's hair. Okie doke. Hey, you know how Rachel from Friends single-headedly revitalized the shag hairdo? Well, if Rachel from Friends were to demonstrate other meanings of the word shag, which of these would you not see her doing? Chasing fly balls with Joey, having steamy Do it! Hey, if they're doing it, it's called shagging. And if they're doing it on shag carpeting, it's called rug burn. <laughs> and for those of you interested in the right answer, shagging could be dancing, chasing fly balls, or British slang for doing the nasty. But the deer is a stag. Come on, none of the friends ever go stag. All right, smack your buzzer and let's see what Dow. Huh, well, it's better than nothing. And it's gonna be called... Most likely to be ashamed of this award. Hey, uh, you remember those silly elections in high school? You know, like most likely to succeed or most likely to get married or, I don't know, most likely to stalk Jennifer Aniston? Well, considering their hair colors, who would be voted most likely to have the fewest hairs at Riverdale High? Archie, Betty, Jughead, or Veronica? Take it! No, Jughead was voted most likely to have a jugged head. Just for the record, here's the right answer. On average, redheads have the fewest number of hairs on their heads. Freaks. But, you know, their hairs are reportedly thicker than any other color, so he could drive that jalopy of his without a helmet. Poke that buzzer, let's see. This baby's gonna be... Real men use bold hold. Okay, 3,189 bucks if you can nail this one. Uh, shall we? Which of these 80s musical acts had the smallest hair? Bon Jovi, New Kids on the Block, Richard Marks, or Motley Crue? Go for it! 
No, but I did hear that John Bon Jovi's hair is really slippery when wet. <laughs> wow. Um, how about this one? Compared to these other guys, the new kids were all pretty clean cut. Huh, I guess long hair was the only thing that wasn't manufactured for them. <laughs> all right, he buzz in and set the cash value. Man, you're either going to win or lose a whole lot of money. It's time for a Dis or Dad. And this Dis or Dad questions category is... Gee, Grandma, what big hair you have. Okay, I'm going to read off the names of seven things. And for each one, you're going to tell me if it's... Someone big, someone covered in hair, or someone big and hairy. Cash in for each one you get right, but you lose out for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. You've got 30 seconds to nail all seven. And we're up. Now, big hair in your boat. King Kong. Godzilla. Cousin It. The Nutty Professor. Captain Caveman. Six out of seven. I'll take that. All right, get a load of you. Ah, let's keep going. Hit that buzzer and let's check out the cat. This one will be... Train to be a bitch or just act like one. Here's the question. Considering the season in which hair grows the fastest, which season should be the busiest for a modeling school's Hair Flipping 101 course? Spring, summer, fall, or winter? Do it! Let's see, spring forward and fall backwards. Yeah, I think I got it now. <laughs> hair grows the fastest during the summer. And hey, during those inactive months of winter, you can take discreet places to vomit 101. You know, to keep that weight look going. Hit that buzzer and let's see that cash. Ooh, it's a little roadkill. When you see an answer that connects the two clues, buzz in. And don't forget to look at all the correct answers so you can guess the bonus question. All right, let's drive. Favorable mention and stops up a drain. What links these two together? for apples and blank cat gold plate. Score. Move from side to side and work on a loom. Score. Impertinent remark and comedian Wilson. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all people with big hair? Unfortunate to pay! Oh, that was lame! Your hair styling techniques. Well, hair today, gone today. Okay, my friend, there's your score. Uh, let's see what you can do to it. All right, buzz in and let's see what kind of dough you're playing. Oh my God, that sucks. Oh well, here's your category. Activists wear short shorts. Here comes the questione. 
Suppose Nair promoted a joint product with the organization Nairal. What would ads for Nairal most likely promise you? Reproductive freedom and hairless legs, animal rights and a tidy bikini line, no nuclear power and no mustache, or social security and silky smooth armpits. Take it! Nairal is the National Abortion Rights Action League. Who says that feminism and hairy legs have to go hand in hand, huh? How much cash we plan for, but And the category is... You dirty rat's nest. And away we go. Say the guys who rat out the mafia get ratted as punishment. What salon treatment might they receive? A chemical bath, a severe combing, a painful braiding, or cement extensions? It's yours if you want it. Hair is ratted or back combed with rapid strokes to give it volume and shape. Yeah, looky here, see? You rat again and you get the blow dryer, see? Yeah. All right, he buzz in and set the cash value. And for your viewing pleasure, old actors never die. They just get tinted. Ready, set, here you go. Suppose cast members of the musical Hair were replaced as often as hair is on a human head. What would the producer most likely tell the new cast members? You won't last six weeks in this town. You'll be waiting table. Take it! Excuse me, waiter. Didn't I see you dancing around naked on stage in some stupid musical? Well, I guess I did. My. <laughs> Should have picked this one. The average scalp hair lasts three to six years before it falls out and is replaced. So after five years, they'd be looking for a new part. <laughs> Get it? Hair? Heart? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Poke that buzzer, let's see how... Hey, looks good to me. And this one's called... Looks like Meathead's been washing his back again. Questions coming. Because the actor who played one of his buddies moonlighted as a commercial spokesman for Liquid Plumber, who might Archie Bunker have called for help with his clogged drain? Frank Lorenzo, Stretch Cunningham, George Jefferson, or Barney Hefner? Go for it! Alan Melvin, who played Barney Hefner, was also the liquid plumber guy in the 70s. You know, he was also Sam the Butcher, so we can assume that he kept Alice's pipes clean, too. <laughs> Whatever that means. Hit your buzzer and... Wow, check out the roots of this clue. Hairstyles of the odd and famous. Uh, hit your buzzer, rinse, and repeat if necessary. Six out of seven! Yeah, maybe now you can get some friends to play with you.
Good morning, everyone. Today on Cooking with Yaks, we're going to make blueberry pancakes with the help of our friend Sparky. Mm. Doesn't that sound good, Sparky? Sparky is going to start us off by mixing the batter. Why don't you start with the eggs, Sparky? Well, it looks like Sparky has mashed the eggs into a sloppy mess. Why don't we try measuring out the flour instead? <coughs> okay, yeah. Let's turn on the oven. Go ahead, Sparky. Uh, it looks like Sparky hit a pipe trying to turn on the oven. So we're going to evacuate the building now. See you next time on Cooking with Yaks. Come on, Sparky. No, Sparky. We don't eat the matches. Sparky! So ya think you know sushi. ship. You and your other yuppie spawn friends think you know sushi. ship. Well, you don't know sushi at all, not a wee bloody bet. Oh, oh, you can sit in your fancy $70 a plate sushi cafes and impress your other human scabby friends and order California roll and think you're the sheep's wool. Well, you're nothing. You're sushi juniors and you make me sick. So from now on, you order sushi the real way, the proper way. You get McLeod sushi or you don't eat it at all. McLeod's only uses real haggis. None of this simpy wimpy fish snot. We only use haggis. Good Scottish men's haggis. And if you know it's good for you, you'll eat it too. So stop being a baby doll freak loser and leave that hermus alone because you're eating McLeod's sushi from now on. One is for the heartache. If you've ever been in love. Two is for the tears. Or just had to do your taxes. I'm itemizing the deductions you've taken through the years. This album is for you. I've got more than $400 of interest in you. Then I showed her my long form check here. As sweet as your first kiss. If you would like a dollar of your love. And as painful as your first audit. To go to my election campaign. Tax Cuts, the new album by Darren Fick. In stores now. You should take another deduction for being blind to my love. If you're looking for an alternative to alternative, check out the new album from White Noise. Static. Rolling Stone calls it a triumph in nihilism. Billboard says it's a sound that can be found on the radio between, well, just about everything. Static features the title track, Static. Turn that crap down. Something's wrong with the receiver. And the live version of Feedback. Static. We don't care if you get it or not. Tonight on Investigative Copy. Until recently, this sleepy Ohio town was primarily known as a test market for Olestra products. Now, religious fanatics are making a pilgrimage here to witness the miraculous weeping anus. I, I was just watching TV and I felt a, a rumbling in my gut. I tried to make it to the toilet, but whoop, there it was. It's beautiful. I think it's a sign from God. There are no words to describe this man's wondrous anus, blessed by our Holy Savior. But is it really a sign from God? I've been here for three days, and the anus seems to weep at regular intervals. But they're almost too regular. I actually bottled some of the tears of the anus. And quite frankly, they have no healing properties. I'm, I'm just a guy who likes eating chips and, and watching TV. The Ohio Weeping Anus. God's miracle or Satan's curse. Tonight. Bring nature to your bathroom with twigs and leaves. Very natural toilet paper made of twigs and leaves. It's not post-consumer content. It's not recycled paper. It's not even paper. It's just twigs and leaves. We collect from the forests of America. Back in the natural days, before there were real bathrooms, before there was toilet paper, they used twigs and leaves. Take up a sack today, now with 50% fewer thorns, not for use with actual plumbing systems. From the pure mountain spring waters of Colorado to the whispering wheat fields of Montana comes whole natural yummy goodness. 
whole natural yummy goodness comes in 846 nature bursting flavors, including brand new sparkling flavin. Whole natural yummy goodness is made with the freshest ingredients known to science. If wrapped and stored in a cool, dry place, whole natural yummy goodness will become a treat passed on for generations. Whole natural yummy goodness from Mother Nature to your table via our laboratories. Whole natural yummy goodness from Organico and Arthur Daniels Heartland Company. Playing solitaire on the computer is fun, right? But it's hard to remember all those rules. Now there's a computer card game that gets back to the basics. 52 Card Pickup 2000. That's right. 52 Card Pickup 2000 does all the work by throwing the virtual deck all over the virtual room. Whoa! There are cards all over the place. You know what to do next. Here's the four of clubs under this couch. I'm going to pick it up. Wow, there's three or four under this table. I'm going to pick them up. You can play by yourself or set up exciting tournament play. With your web browser, you can even play other people across the internet. It's simple. It's repetitive. It's 52 Card Pickup 2000. You'll wonder why you ever owned a real deck of cards. 